Hello friends, this video on chemical effects of current part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question is why does the bulb glow? So we got to know that when electric current flows through the circuit, when the circuit is complete, at that time the bulb will glow. But what exactly happens that makes this bulb glow? Why is it that the current flow makes the bulb glow? So the, the same thing is happening here. Let's see. So the bulb glows because current is allowed to flow through the wire of the circuit. So now let us try to understand this also with the same example of the bridge. So you have the same bridge connecting the towns A and B. So A is on this side and B is on the other side of the bridge. Now let us suppose that the bridge exists. Nobody has broken the bridge. Now let us suppose that somebody has spilled something on the bridge. Maybe some, someone has spilled oil on the bridge or some mud or sand on the bridge because of which the cyclist is not able to travel. So even if, though the path is there, the bridge is there, but on the bridge, the bridge doesn't allow the cyclist to move forward. So it is present, the path is present, but the path is not allowing the person to move on it. So in that case, do you think that the cyclist will be able to reach town B? No, because even though the path is there, he is not able to move. He is not allowed to move. So in a very similar way, in case of a circuit, let us suppose that the circuit is complete. Okay, the circuit is complete. The path is all complete. But these wires, they do not allow the current to flow through them. So if the wires do not allow the current to flow through them, so even though that circuit is complete, current will not flow. Right? So are you getting my point? So there are two things. One thing is the circuit has to be complete. That is the path should be complete. That is one requirement for current to flow. The second requirement is that the wires or the material of which the path is made up of, that material should allow current to flow through it. So now you might ask that does that mean that some materials might allow current to flow through them and some other materials might not allow current to flow through them? Yes, exactly. So based on whether a material allows current to flow through it and a material doesn't allow current through it, we have classified materials into different types. For example, some materials are good conductors of electricity, some materials are poor conductors of electricity. So depending upon whether the wires of which the circuit is made up of, they allow current to pass through it or not, the bulb will, I mean, the result depends whether the bulb will blow or not. So it is also important that these wires, the conductivity of the wires or the materials, in this case the material is nothing but the wires. So these wires also need to be good conductors of electricity so that the bulb can blow when the circuit is complete. So based on this, let us try to look at the different types of materials which are being classified based on their electrical conductivity. Now there are three types of materials. First is the conductor, second is semiconductor and the last one is insulator. So conductors have high conductivity. That means what is the meaning of conduction? Conduction means the, uh, the material allows uh, electricity or electric current to pass through them. So they conduct electric current. So that is why they are called conductors. In fact, they are also known as good conductors because they are quite good at conducting electricity. So they allow a good amount of electric current to pass through them. Examples of conductors are metals and water. They are good conductors of electricity. The extreme other end of conductors are the insulators, which have very low conductivity. They, in fact, in many of the cases, they do not allow electricity at all to pass through them. So that is why they are also known as poor conductors. So some of the examples are plastic, wood, glass. So they are all poor conductors. They do not allow electric current to pass through them. In between of conductors and insulators are the semiconductors. Semi means half. So they conduct 
but they do not conduct as good as the good conductors in fact but they are not as bad as the insulators so they have intermediate conductivity so some of the examples of semiconductors are silicon germanium gallium arsenide polyaniline these are all examples of semiconductors now semiconductors the, the functioning and working of semiconductors are a little complex so you will learn it in your higher classes so right now Today we are going to focus mostly on the conductors and the insulators. In fact, we are going to talk more about the conductors because we want to see how electric current produces chemical changes in a solution through which it passes. So when we say that current passes through a solution, that means that solution has to be good conductor. So we will focus mostly on the conductors in this lesson. So I hope you understood it, right? So some materials will be conductor, some material can be insulator, some material can be semiconductor. Now we prefer to use the term good conductors and poor conductors rather than conductors and insulators because when we say insulator, insulator term means that something which doesn't allow current at all to pass through them. But basically most of these materials which we call as insulators, they also allow some amount of electric current to pass through them under certain situations. So that is why it is preferable to use the term poor conductors rather than insulators. Poor conductors means they also conduct electricity but very poorly. So they have very low conductivity. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.